Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and uh, we're going to do two things today. I do have an article that I want to cover with you, um, but we're going to do something else first on um, sunscreen and how it impacts people of color, African Americans and Hispanics. I've had a lot of inquiries about this, I did some research, I have some good stuff to tell you, but as you can see we're in a different place in the building. We are in one of the Wellness Forum Health's kitchens. Uh, this is the teaching kitchen. We have another commercial kitchen that's just off to the right of me here. And the reason why we are starting this video clip in the kitchen is because many of you write to me and you ask me what I eat. You ask me for food journals. And once in a while I get inspired and I post a food journal on my blog. I should do it more often, but one of the reasons I don't, frankly, is that my diet is very similar one day to the next. And I think you might get tired of reading the same breakfast every morning. You know, I, I'm a routinized type of person. But um, I thought it would be interesting to show you one of the things that I eat every single day. This is how I start my day. I have our smoothie, and I'll, I'm going to make it for you right here, um, and two pieces of toast with fat-free hummus. That's what I have for breakfast every morning, and I've been doing it for years and years. It gives me a lot of energy, um, great way to start the day, high carbohydrate, very low in protein and fat, great fuel. All right, so. Um, some of the ingredients you get at the grocery store, like almond milk and frozen strawberries. And then some of the ingredients you get from us, I get them from us, um, we have our smoothie mix, which is vegetable powders, black seeds, brewer's yeast, and we have our own green tea farms in China. And um, we grow the tea there, we hand pick every leaf dry it on screen so that we don't oxidize the tea, we don't break the leaves through uh, machine cutting and that sort of thing. It's very high antioxidant rich food. So I'm going to make this smoothie for you, show you how easy it is. It takes very little time. And um, so we start with almond milk. We put about eight ounces of almond milk in the blender here. And I have a Vitamix at home. And we have Vitamixes here at the office. Love Vitamix, by the way. I don't get paid to say this. I just love my Vitamix. Love having it here. Makes it really easy to do. So we put in the plant milk. And then the next thing we're going to do is we will put in two tablespoons of the smoothie mix. So if I was making this for more than myself, I could make, you know, I could make a batch. Obviously, the Vitamix is big, so I could make for the whole family here. So the vegetable powders go in, beets, tomatoes, spinach, that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll put a tablespoon of the brewer's yeast, great source of B vitamins and trace minerals, right into the blender. Now, with a Vitamix, you can um, put flax seeds, for example, into the Vitamix, and it will grind them up. And you can also put the tea in, but if you don't have a Vitamix and you're using a regular blender, I recommend you use this coffee grinder here. And so we'll do that. And I have to warn you, it'd be a little bit of noise when we turn this machinery on, but we put the black seeds in the coffee grinder and we will put some of the green tea. Uh, about two tablespoons of the green tea, it's whole leaf tea. Uh, I'm not big on measuring, so I'm just gonna put some tea in the uh, coffee grinder. And then we will grind this up again in the Vitamix, you can do it all in one fell but I'm using a coffee grinder here. Okay, that's that. And then we will pour this in the blender. There we go. So all that goodness goes in there. All right, now at home, I would use fresh bananas, but I'm here at the office and so we're going to put frozen bananas. So I would put one big fresh banana in the blender, but I'm going to use the, uh, well, use this one. You can tell I don't cook in the kitchen. At home, in my own kitchen, I use my hands, but not so much in a commercial kitchen. Not such a great idea. All right, so we put a banana in there, and then we'll put uh, some frozen berries. And you can use different things, like I use mangoes and strawberries and peaches, you know, whatever's in season. Some people don't like the frozen fruit. I like it. It gives it a milkshakey type appearance. So there we go. We get the bananas and strawberries in there. And then um, I always add a little bit of extra water to thin it out a little bit. And so now we will turn this on.
it up. And you can play around with this. Like I said, you can use different fruit. You can also thin it out more with water or make it more ice creamy. But I'm going ahead, it's not over here. And here it is, pour it into a glass. You can see that nice creamy texture going right into the glass. And it is fabulous. All right, very filling. There's about 14 grams of fiber in this smoothie. Um, and it's got very high antioxidant foods, lots of fiber. Again, that complex carbohydrate that you want to start your day off right and fuel your body for the rest of the day. So that's how I start my day. That's what I eat for breakfast. And I thought you might enjoy seeing this little setup. Plus, isn't it interesting to see me in a different place in the building instead of always sitting behind my desk? We try to change it up for you once in a while. All right, so if you're interested in learning more about our smoothie and some of the other things that we offer here, because we have some really amazing foods here, amhopper.msn.com is my email address. All right? Okay, so now I did some research on this. I, I did this, um, a video clip uh, a little bit ago, maybe a couple, three weeks ago, on sunscreen. And, and the sunscreen issue is concerning for a couple of reasons. One is the ingredients in sunscreen, which are, are questionable, and I will have some more information on that here. Another is that there is an increasing amount of information showing we really do need to have direct sun exposure, produce vitamin D, etc. So um, having said that, I've created a lot of information about that, but I was getting some inquiries from some of our subscribers and members who are African American and Hispanic and saying, does this apply to us? Uh, are the rules different for us, etc. So I'll just start out, it's summertime. And what we should all be doing is spending time outdoors in the sunshine so we can produce vitamin D. And of course the government, um, the sunscreen industry plays a role. Um, health authorities are all telling people, stay inside, all sun exposure is bad for you. And I literally meet people who are putting sunscreen on before they weed the flower beds and walk to the mailbox because they really think it's dangerous to be exposed to the sun. Now the FDA's advice is that everybody should use sunscreen regardless of age, gender, or race since all people are at risk of skin cancer. But it's not clear that this is the case for people with darker skin. And one of the reasons for this is that first of all, they have not been included in many of the clinical trials that have, many of which were flawed I might add, but that have looked at the issue of sun exposure and sunscreen, etc. cetera. Um, and there are distinct differences in um, the skin of African Americans and Hispanic people and how, they, uh, how their skin responds to sunlight. Um, now, there, there are several articles in the library that we've created here that deal with things like sun exposure, vitamin D, limitations of sunscreen, potential risks associated with them. And these articles and their references show that you really do need to get out in the sun. It's the best way to produce vitamin D. Um, that uh, cancer rates have been increasing in a dose-dependent manner, right along with the use of sunscreen in westernized countries, and that some ingredients are sun in sunscreen are harmful, uh, both to humans and the environment. And I found a new factoid I wanted to share with you, which is that benzophene and oxybenzone are estrogenic compounds used in sunscreen, and research shows that women who use sunscreens that contain these particular ingredients have a higher risk of endometriosis, and I had not covered that fact in any of the previous articles on sunscreen. Well, to get to the issue at hand here, sunscreen may be even more useless and harmful for people of color. According to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, UV exposure does not increase the risk of melanoma in black or Hispanic people. In fact, non-white people have a high percentage of skin cancers on areas of the body that are not normally exposed to sunlight, for example, the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. Additionally, there's a very low incidence of skin cancer in areas of the world like Sub-Saharan Africa where sunscreen and sun avoidance are not part of public health policy and are not preached by um, health authorities. People with darker skin have the same number of melanites, um, melana, mel melanocytes, I should say, uh, the cells that produce melanin as people with lighter skin, but the melanocytes of darker skinned people produce more melanin, which in turn results in a significantly low, lower rate of absorption of UV light from the sun. As a result, according to the National Cancer Institute, melanoma risk for blacks is 20 to 30 times lower than it is for whites. This means that people of color should be equally concerned about not getting sunburns, they should, you know, but also that they would benefit from sunshine as much as Caucasian people 
and the dangers of sunscreen um, and the side effects of using sunscreens may make them even more inadvisable for people of color. Well, according to Dr. Adewell Adamson, an African-American dermatologist, blacks can develop melanoma, but the risk is low, which means that the current recommendation for all people, regardless of race, gender, age, to wear sunscreen is not consistent with available evidence. He likens the risk of melanoma for black people to the risk of breast cancer for men. Men do develop breast cancer, but the risk is so low that we certainly would never propose that men start getting screened for breast cancer. It's just not the incidence isn't high enough, and so it is with the incidence of melanoma in darker skinned people. Dr. Adamson says that dermatologists defend sunscreen use for African Americans by pointing out that black patients are often diagnosed with later stage melanoma. But he says this has nothing to do with sunscreen or not using it, and more to do with helping people and educating them to be more aware of changes in the skin, particularly changes in any growth that would indicate that something is wrong and seeking medical attention earlier. He says that using sunscreen to reduce an already rare condition is absolutely nonsensical. And goes on to say there exists no study that demonstrates sunscreen reduces skin cancer risk in black people, period. Those are exact, his exact words. He says we don't know what the risk factors are for melanoma in black and dark skinned people, but they certainly are not UV rays. That's another direct quote. The American Academy of Dermatology has appointed a working group to review this issue for Hispanics and African Americans, but my proposal is I really think that the entire issue needs to be reviewed. People benefit from sun exposure. Vitamin D is a hormone that is produced in response to sun exposure. There are 10,000 other photo products that are produced in response to sun exposure. One thing I might add is the incidence and risk of developing hypertension is higher in the African American population. And one of the photo products produced in response to sunlight is nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels and reduces the risk of blood pressure, higher blood pressure. So for many, many reasons, um, this, this, this whole issue needs to be looked at again. I think that the influence of industry, specifically the sunscreen industry, has caused, um, uh, it has meant very bad public policy and a lot of false information about dangers of sunlight and the idea that wearing sunscreen and taking vitamin D supplements is a substitute for it. So I don't think the American Dermatology Association is going to do that, but that would be my recommendation. So now you understand the issues with sunscreen as it pertains to all people, including people of color in our country. Hopefully that will help you in making informed decisions. And consider drinking fabulous high carbohydrate, high fiber food for breakfast in the morning too. All right, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Um, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.